Hello, Drake here. Um, today, or tonight, um, I've actually acquired one of Frank's box. Uh, this goes back to one of those ghost box back about a decade ago. Frank Sumpton, I believe, made, uh, made over a hundred of these. I don't exactly remember the exact count. If so, you can post it down below and I'll update the description. This is Frank's box 134. It was actually made for Sid Schultz at the time when he was around. Um, I actually, speaking of having to get it to work, I just realized the side of my hill does not actually have any uh, wireless, or because the side of the hill I'm facing towards Catalina. So, I'm going to look inside just to make sure the battery's connected and has juice. But this is going to be a teardown of his Frank's box. I believe it is possible to take it apart. And I think there's a radio in there, but we'll find out a little bit more about it in a moment here. Okay, so I'm going to see how or what is going on here because I think the meter, let's see, let me grab my meter just to make sure I've got some power going on here. thing actually has power in it. Now the battery is kind of weak so we might have to ditch and grab some more batteries. It's at 8.4 volts but it might be because I left it on the whole day. Testing it earlier and not having any LED lights of any sort doesn't make it easy. Because I think there looks like possible corrosion that went on here. Okay, I just spent about five minutes trying to clean out all of the leaked battery. Why you don't leave batteries inside of a device for a long period of time while you switch to rechargeable battery. But this is, since I think it was left in storage for a few years, like many of our electronics that I have to check for. I'll try to find some more batteries. Okay, if we have eight AA batteries, that should make 12 volts, right? So we should get, yay, 12 volts. I'm theorizing that the device in here actually has a radio with a little amplifier in it or some sort. So let's see if we can turn it on, hopefully. I don't think you'll hear anything because, I, like I said, I don't think I have any stations on this side, but we'll try. There's an antenna. To make an antenna we simply just stuck a wire, but I think there's two antennas, AM and FM. Frank was probably a radio guy. <laughs> That time it actually worked better than I thought. Okay, so so those you those of you who've already known um, the Frank's box 
theory of operation is that it's an it's a radio essentially where a radio essentially takes a tuner takes a selection of frequencies um, a whole range of frequencies in our AM and FM band and yes AM is actually amplitude modulated so therefore you can actually decode or demodulate AM simply with a with a detector diode a couple of stages involve actually moving the tuner around and depending on the radio design one of the most common is that you actually sort of focus the VCO or the focus the little window where you want to receive the signal very narrow and you scan and you, you, you slide it around to the station you want to hear so in the case of the sweep speed it's actually sliding it around at different rates slow or fast rates um, FM works about the same way it's actually moving the tuner up and down and sweeping around, hence the knob for sweep speed and the knob for uh, the, the, the different station mode you put it in. Of course I won't hear anything. I think that only works on the other side. Yeah, that only works on the AM side. It's, it's really fast, really low sweep speeds. Okay, so now I actually want to know these two outputs I was told were AM and FM oscillator outputs. So just out of curiosity, let's see if we can connect that up to something. I need to, do, I need to actually find some photo connectors here. Probably not the best cable to use to get signal out, but It'll actually fit, and that's all I needed to do. So let's see if this actually puts out something rather useful. It's good to actually hear that my meter will actually pick up this frequency, but it may be too high for me. I think this meter maxes out. Yep. I don't think the meter will actually see it. Let's see if the scope will see it. Probably not the best to actually break out the oscillator if it is on this type of wire, but... Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. We got something here. Okay, so switching over to my oscilloscope. It has a nice auto set function. We can actually get sort of a measurement. So that oscillator is just, okay, oh, so there you go, that's the oscillator being changed as we're sweeping. If I change the sweep speed faster, so it's faster, let's go one way. Yeah, there you go. So it's actually shifting the oscillator speed. That's what it's doing. So that's where the AM oscillator out is. So what what frequency we're looking at? 0 0.2 microseconds per division. Oh, exactly. 
stop it somewhere. Oh, but that's because I think this has a 10 minute limit, so I'll probably have to cut that out. Anyhow, it's actually, the sweep speed actually allows it to change the, os I guess, the oscillator. So it's actually varying the oscillator design. I might have to try, so what's on, on the FM side? Let's see if it does the same thing. Well, if I had to guess, sticking the wire out like this is probably not a good idea. Knock out the cursor for a second here. Okay, after messing around for a few seconds, I could actually see the fact that the frequency is really high, but then again, we're talking about the FM oscillator component. And uh, the big hunk of cable I have laying out there is probably not the best cable to play with that. So I'm going to have to pause it, but at this point you can actually see in the scope, it's actually slowly shifting that frequency faster and slower. So I'm taking, if it's shifting the local oscillator, it's actually causing all the frequency to shift up and down. It's like if you use a, if you use a, uh, um, a reference clock and you're moving the reference clock up and down, it's actually shifting what the frequency that we're tuning to, that we perceive. So that is actually an interesting way of, reminds me of the old ways of overclocking computers if you actually switched out the reference clock to something faster, everything gets multiplied up. So I'm going to pause this in a sec here, and I'm going to actually begin prepping the tip to, uh, to, to do a quick breakdown of Frank's box and see what's inside. Now before I completely take it out, what you're hearing is, it's because the rate of tuning is really fast, they go really slow. And once again, you probably won't hear too many FM stations because I'm on the opposite side of the hill. Okay, so now we're going to see what's inside of Frank's box. And to do that, I'm going to need a Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to take this thing apart carefully because they technically don't want to break it, but... I don't think it'll be fragile or anything like that. Because if I know Frank, he probably used hot glue on a lot of things. But I will say though, it's the screw head is where my problem generally lies. So I can try to find some that should fit that. Okay. Let's stop this for a second and pull all the screws out. Okay, now I actually have all the four screws and put a lot of screws taken out. Let's see if we can pop the cover off. This is Phillips tuner underneath it. Let's see if we actually have something in here that makes it worth interesting. Let me screw out. It's a little sealed. Okay, Frank, uh, you did a funky job, but you actually do it like I do. And I used to do hand circuits. So let's see if we can actually pop this cover open without damaging any of the wires. They don't look too hard to repair, and Frank did a good job actually putting some hot glue restrainer on the wire. Okay, here's the cool part. 
There's the AM FM switch I see right there. Boost wire. I think, judging by what I see here, so if I'm getting this actually, let's see, this actually looks pretty spiffy. So this is the battery container. Here's the main power switch as we feed, and that's the simple part. It says 12 volts on there, so he actually did a good job labeling it. Bunch of capacitors, hot glue on it, I guess keeps it a little bit more stable. Um, it says 5 volts, 6 volts max. And below it looks like an AM FM tuner board actually, which I see down there. Down, down, down there. Let's see if I can move this here. Let's see if you can find it. Yeah. You can see that there's a couple of other adjustments and I'm not sure what they're for. FM DC antenna. Frank doesn't really publish or didn't publish any schematic, but seeing what he did, it looks pretty simple actually. I'm also interested to see where it says the rate wire and where that's doing that because where that looks like the rate wire is driving. Let's see if we can actually move this just enough out. So we try to move this out here. And it See so we can try to move this a little bit closer here. I'll well, tear anything out, but the way he set this up is extremely tight. I don't know if you open it to the left or to the right. It looked like to me he actually worked on it on the side. And I kind of get the idea. Okay, so the right goes into this. This wire goes into this chip here. If I can see what it says. But as I saw from the oscillator wires, that's the oscillator being generated. Let's see if you can try to read that chip there. One way to do it is you take alcohol and you actually rub on the top of the chip so you can actually see clean off the oil or whatever it is in there. One thing I would do where I guess this was never built for mass production but he did everything by hand and clean off the top of the chip because if I clean off the top of the chip I can see what the number is I think. Move that battery down so we don't lose it. There's actually multiple transistors. He actually has this cute little socket. I guess transistors do get broken somehow. I've never had a transistor fail on me. LM324, so it's, I'm assuming that's just an amplifier chip. But, uh, there's a 5 volt regulator, there's a supply to the board. There's another add-on board he built on top. He did such an interesting job with his tuners. Pretty much nearly impossible to replace any part if he needed to. And uh, there's the there's his um, bolts. He bolted it up. So you'll see there's the AM antenna right there. Phillips. Oh, he basically took a radio part and took, gutted out the uh, components. Since I don't see a tuner component, I'm pretty sure the component that was replaced was one of the uh, capac uh, the variable capacitor or something similar, but if you remove that out... Not sure if I got the last one. The last thing I'll, I'm looking at here is the speaker is an 8 ohm speaker, 1 watt. Uh, a little bit bigger than it should be, but the amplifier here is it looks like an LM386, which is a quarter watt amplifier chip. And that is hooked to probably one of the audio out, which is also connected to this 
line out wire right here which what I'm seeing is running before the amplifier so if you were to turn the volume all the way down I presume the fact that doing that just allows it to turn the volume all the way down you could just use the line out to feed to an external amplifier it looks mono from my point of view so so I think it was just parts used from another radio he did a good job gluing it in with epoxy surprisingly not just screwing it in he made this stuff last nearly forever so well wouldn't wouldn't build but that's pretty much a close-up of the inside of a Frank's box there's your radio component which is the second board underneath um, can't really see that and I wonder if there's an easy way to pull it out because he looked like he glued something on this side so the antenna wrapping and all that stuff is all over the map what I'm presuming that there's an there's a amplifier chip that gets turned on and off here <laughs> that's this wire yeah so AM boost is external AM nice otherwise he uses the internal AM antenna so that's pretty much what's the difference between the two okay so now I'll put the screw back in after I've got a good chance to see what's inside so in short sense this version of all the other ones were the sweep speed which we looked at it again which is this wire here good job winding the wires down. You just have to take the bottom board out to actually do any work on it at all. I don't think he intended to actually do any work on it. But yeah, the LM328 is more than likely it's configured as a reference oscillator or an amplifier. No, it's actually configured as an amplifier. Yeah, actually, let's try something here. without breaking anything or losing any of the screws. This is not how you um, say not how you do. Let's see if you can try to sit on the side. So I don't want this to be pulling on any wires too hard. Did you actually make no. I tend to put extra long wires in my circuit so you can actually open stuff up without it actually giving me problems taking disconnecting anything. actually want to look at this more closely or instead of the oscillator output she might want to look at a reference voltage here but I may have to pull some schematics later of the uh, 328 op amp the 328 yeah 328 is an op amp good to about 2 megahertz so I'm sure he's shifting the reference clock that's what it's doing so if I can find it, you could probably see it in there somewhere. Yeah, that reference, that wire runs down to the uh, tuner board. It's buried on the right side. Yeah, there it is. It looks like it right there. This is 5 volts. Next to that one is a red. Yeah, that's an amplifier. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, there it is. So on the left side, AF, FO, AM, FM. He's definitely worked on a lot of radios. But I can see there's another pot down there, which is kind of weird. <laughs> VOL, there's another tuning pot on the left. Hmm. 
show, since I saw close to about 2 megahertz shifting, I'm going to safely assume that it actually shifts uh, shifts the uh, tuning voltage. But I'm trying to find where the lead output is. I see this resistor up here floating. I'm thinking that's his white noise source, because I think he just used a hot resistor for that. Or white noise, and then there's probably a low pass filter. That's what the sweep rate is really changing. It appears to be changing. Yeah, his wires. Exciting. But definitely, definitely fascinating. So hopefully I can do a quick edit. Put this back together because I'm actually going to give this to a friend of mine. And which probably do better use than I do. But since I actually have a Drake's box which works in a tuning strategy, software controlled, tuning rate, um, I was actually going to try a few other things too as well and try some, some software SDR based tuning strategies as well. Since that can be done with VFOs which are virtual that little tuner moving up and down. But we might try since I can find another one of these connectors, maybe the next quick short video after this I might hook it up to a spectrum analyzer and see what it looks like. I need to find something that actually goes up to this frequency though. Okay, I'll probably clip out this one section. It'll actually add to the long time of this. This is kind of cool. You put the little drawer here. I might stick some foam in here to prevent this guy from rattling around. And it says Phillips tuner. Okay. Hey. 